Okay, all you sports fans out there, we're moving along on the rigging, and my good friend Will Lesh, the uh, head of Tippecanoe Boats and the Grand Poobah, um, he goes into great detail about how to reinforce the jib and the mainsail booms and talks about sleeves. I thought I'd take just a moment to describe and show you what sleeves we're talking about. Now, the first thing is he talks about some sleeves that you screw eyelets into. Well, that's this uh, very small diameter carbon fiber tube. Now, if you take one of these eyelets, and you can see what I'm talking about here, there's, I don't know, probably a dozen, it just fits into the end and screws in there. The jib boom is going to use one of these at the front. The mainsail boom is not. The mainsail is going to have a wire use, uh, to use as the gooseneck. So they both get this reinforcing tube, but only the jib is going to use the eyelet. Okay. Now, in addition, he also talks about having this sleeve floating into the back of the jib and the mainsail boom, and that's for being able to rig it and unrig it. I'm not going to do that on this boat. I have a little different way that I like to go with. So this is a challenge to Will to perhaps uh, make a video showing us how he makes his uh, sliding jib booms, okay? Anyway, he also talks about three sleeves that are used for the uh, reinforcing. Now, this is the shiny one on the exterior. It does look similar to the other two. However, it is uh, shiny and it's the only one that slides over the mast. Now you can see this. The other two will not slide over the mast. <clears throat> but they will slide over the jib boom and also the mainsail boom. So the jib boom is the shorter of these two, but you can see that this fits very nice and snug over both of these. Now remember, I did say that I was going to do a little different technique, so I'm not going to do quite the same uh, reinforcing that Will calls out. I'm actually just going to cut two three-quarter inch long pieces, and then we're going to sand them and pot them into the front of the jib and the mainsail boom. I mark mine at three quarters of an inch. <clears throat> the way that I do uh, mine, that should be more than adequate. I do like my Dremel diamond saw makes a very fine cut. There we go. Now, you know how I like to take adhesive and glue the sheets of sandpaper together. This is actually 320 grit and the surface is very fine on this. So it doesn't take a whole lot of sanding to get this prepped. So I've got pretty uniformly dull surface there. And I'm going to uh, clean these. And I'm going to see if I can get just a tiny bit 
of sanding to the inside of this. Might be a little dicey, but any little bit helps. And really, it's not too much of a structural issue. So I'm getting a little bit in there. Let me get the other one. Okay, now I've got my previously mixed epoxy and the fit is so tight you actually don't really even need to thicken it. It will be just fine with just a little tiny gob on the end. There we go. Looks like it's doing well. Oh, and you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put just a little gob of goo on the threads and I'm going to thread this into here right now. It's not going to do one bit of harm. It'll also give me the ability to pull the tube out should I want to. Okay, so now there we go. I've got epoxy all the way in there. And I'm going to pull this out for just a second for you to see. So here I've got the eyelet threaded into the inner sleeve. And then that is glued into the inside of the jib boom. Remember, jib boom only. So now I'm going to take the other one. And remember, I do not use an eyelet. This is just going to be for the wire. So I put a little gob of adhesive on that. Stick this in. Just stick it in flush. You can see that there's nothing sticking out. And we're done. So that's going to take care of this. Then I'm going to start prepping the, um, the mast for the gooseneck and other parts there, okay? Talk to you later. Okay, all you rigifiers out there, we're closing in on the day that you're going to go sailing. Now, I had talked a little bit about how I've done a little different job on rigging my uh, booms. So I wanted to cover what's going to be needed for that. And I'm going to show you what the final result is. Now, this is the jib boom. Now, if you look at that, you can see that this is a simple nylon piece. This is a hardware store item, very inexpensive. 3 8 inch outside diameter nylon spacer. It's 1 quarter inch front to back. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a number 6 32 stainless steel set screw in it that's 1 8 inch long. You will need a 1 16th inch Allen wrench for this. What we're also going to do, we're going to drill a pilot hole that's 7 64ths of an inch first. We're going to tap it, and then we're going to ream a hole right down the center. The tap is going to require the set screw of a, a pilot hole of 7 64ths of an inch and the ream will be 15 64ths. That is 1 64th of an inch smaller than 1 quarter inch. So what you will need is, uh, I don't know, a dozen or so of these nylon spacers. They're pretty inexpensive. A dozen or so of the 632 screws. You will also need a tap. This is a 632 tap and tap handle. And that's about it. Not really uh, very expensive. So let's get going on this. Now this is my 7 64 inch bit that I have in the drill press. And I'm just going to eyeball where I center this. So, raise this up a bit. There we 
go. Okay, that looks pretty well centered. So I'm going to tap it real quick. Doesn't take much. Just go all the way through till it bottoms out on the hole. And then when it's bottomed out, you go back and forth a little bit, and that's just to make sure that the threads are cut cleanly. So that's my set screw hole. And now what I'm going to do is change my 15 64 bit. Now I have to ream this. This is actually the trickiest part. And the reason is, is that it's very easy for this nylon to uh, slip. And you don't want to squeeze this any harder than you have to because that means you're distorting the nylon. So it, it's kind of uh, a double-edged sword here. Squeeze too tight and you elongate the hole too little and it will uh, slide. In fact, most of the time it does slide. There we go. Yeah, I don't know how that happened, but uh, that worked out pretty well. So now all we have to do is do a little bit of cleanup of this nylon thread, put a set screw in it, and we've got an adjustment here. Okay? We'll see you guys out there. Okay, T37, build a fires out there. We're deep in the midst of rigging, so I thought I would show a couple things to you, show you how this is generally laid out and how the sail control works below deck. First off, though, I wanted to point out that you may have noticed that I turned my two servos sideways. The reason for that is that I decided I wanted to move the sail control servo forward and not change the length of this push rod. Otherwise, I could have just swapped positions and put the rudder aft. The uh, reason for putting the servo forward is going to become clear in just a second. Now, I've put the sail control arm on deck uh, just for clarification to see what it is that we're doing. So anyway, what the first thing you're going to do is take two of these brass eyelets out of your kit and cut about a three inch long piece of the heavy duty spectra line. You're going to tie one eyelet onto the end of the servo here and that is so that your main and jib sheet control, the first line, can go through that. Alright? Now one thing I want to point out, it's spectra and it does not hold a knot very well at all. So all of my knots with spectra, I put a dab of crazy glue, that is cyanoacrylate. Okay, so we've got our eyelet tied here. Second thing is, cut about a 20 inch long piece of the heavy duty spectra and tie a knot to the eyelet that is right here under the deck. Tie it up short run that length of line out through this eyelet that you just tied to the control arm and that's going to come back uh, and the length has to be determined by your clearances and here's what I mean this is your main and jib sheet that is tied into this second eyelet now when the sail is all the way out it will go back like this, and right now that eyelet is too blocked against the underside of the deck. So it, the sails cannot go out any farther than this. When we bring the sails all the way in, that is all the way forward that it can go. So here are the lengths of the, uh, here are the limits of the controls. That's all the way forward and there's all the way back and by putting the servo a little further forward for the sail control I was able to get a little more throw on that. So are we clear? Okay so what you want is this eyelet to go all the way forward 
to all the way back. That is the determination of your length. Now run the lighter spectra through this Barney post under the deck. You tie both ends to this and these will become your main and jib sheets, okay? I hope that's clear and we will talk to you later. Okay guys, right now I've got you looking in on the port side and uh, hopefully you can see these lines here. This is our main and jib sheet that's coming under here. And you can see this is with a sail control arm all the way aft, which means that this is having all the sh uh, sheets loose for downwind. So when we pull it, you can see that here, this, this is our little brass eyelet with the main and jib sheet tied to it. So when we bring the sails all the way in, here you can see it pulling there. You can probably hear, it, uh, hear the servos too. Anyway, this is how that works. Sails all the way in, sails all the way out. And this means that uh, with this one to two purchase, one inch of sail control arm movement results in two inches of main and jib sheet movement. Okay, is everything clear? All right, we'll get on with it. Okay, all you T-37 almost sailors, we're just about ready to uh, get the boat wet. But at this point, there's a couple things I wanted to discuss. First thing is, I want you to remember that when you're working on this, you're running around with a knife, uh, scissors, sharp tools around your beautifully finished boat. So be very careful. You can also get some paint or varnish or epoxy on your hands, not know it, and ruin the finish. And believe me, as a victim of this, I can tell you that it's been more than once that you get this far along and you think everything is going great and then discover that you've put a scratch in it or you put some epoxy on it. Anyway, so at this stage what I'm going to do is I've got these holes for the uh, eyelets in the deck. I've taken a scrap of uh, wood and I've put a very sharp point on it and I'm going to go and seal inside each of these holes with a little tiny drop of varnish. And what that's going to do is help prevent discoloration in the ensuing years as water washes over this deck. If you didn't seal it, you could end up getting some discolorations. Okay, well at this point I'm going to let you go and figure out how to screw in eyelets, but I think we're uh, ready to start installing deck hardware. We'll see you in a bit. Alright racers, we're getting ready to drill the gooseneck. Uh, that requires a 1 16th inch drill bit, so I've got this already chucked up. And it also requires the 1 16th inch rod. Now this rod is about 4.5 inches long. Part of it is going to be made into the pin that holds this sleeve. The rest of it is going to be used for the gooseneck, okay? So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and drill more or less in the center of this and see if I can get this thing going because it's easier said than done. There we go. Okay, we do not want to turn that. Next thing I'm going to do is take the nippers. Now I've marked this 5 16ths of an inch in here and I took this sandpaper and I made sure there were no burrs on this edge so that it will go through. All right, That is 5 16ths. Okay. So there's my 5 16 inch pin, and probably I can work this tape off. Obviously it's fairly hard to see marks onto the uh, stainless itself. There we go. 
Okay, so with this tapered in, the side that I sanded in, we're going to shove that through. And that too is easier said than done. There we go. Now I'm going to take a little bit of epoxy and I'm going to tap, put that on the end just to make sure that doesn't come out. But there, we've got that fixed four and five eighths from the bottom, okay? And uh, next we're going to go to uh, putting the two eyes at the top of the mast. Okay, you riggers, pretty soon you're going to be ready for a career in boat rigging. Anyway, time to get the top of the mast drilled. So I've got the drill bit that was included. That's a number 53 in a wire gauge size. I've marked the mast here. I've got one mark on the back, three eighths of an inch from the bottom here. And I've got another mark at five and five eighths. And for those of you in countries other than the U.S. that uses metric, sorry about that, my apologies. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and drill this with the number 53, but we've got to put this piece of nylon tubing down the mast first. Now I've taped the top so that this doesn't move on us. So the top half inch is taped. And the nylon tube is to give the screws some extra bite. All right, so this is five and five eighths inch down. And I'm gonna aim for the center. And I can feel it go through the nylon. And this I had already marked and they are opposite each other. They're 180 degrees opposite. So try and do as best you can. And I felt that go through. Okay. So now we're ready to drill our head stay and our back stay attachments. So here we go. Oops. Fingers are very big at this scale. Okay, there's that, and now we get the one at the top, and we're closing in on getting ready to put the mainsail on. Okay, there we are. So now I can just take this tape off and uh, cut the top end off. And let's go on to getting the gooseneck done. How do that work? Okay, all you riggers out there in T37 land, if you sail big boats, you know that once you start putting the sails onto the boat and hanking them up, you're just about ready to go sailing. Well, that's pretty much the case here. Now, we have to put the mainsail on at this point because without the main on, we can't put the eyelets on. The, the sail will not slide over the eyelets. So what I've done is I came down five and five eighths inches from the top of the mast and I put a slit that's three quarters of an inch long. And what that allows me to do is to adjust the sail up and down with the cunning ham and not start wrinkling the sail. All right. Now the other thing is I trimmed off the extra sail area uh, just above this uh, corner patch and that's how I'm going to tie the halyard up, okay? Pretty simple, a three-quarter inch long slit on the center line, trim any extra sail area off and you're ready to put the eyelets in, okay? Okay, you sailors out there, I've rigged the backstay and I've also tied the mainsail up to the top eye at the top of the mast. So I ran the backstay down and I'm going to have to use the fingers here so this may jitter the, the uh, camera. But I brought the line down, came to a loop, and then brought it back up. I made the uh, extra length about five inches or so 
to uh, go up and back towards the mast to attach this bowsy. Now a bowsy is a device that is used for tightening backstays. It's actually very clever. And I have one here. You should have a couple that are in your kit. But very simply, the line comes down, goes through the first hole, out, down through the second hole, back to your eyelet, and then comes down and is tied to the bottom eye, uh, bottom hole of the bowsy. So as you tighten it up, it jams itself. So a very simple thing, but uh, very effective. This gives you plenty of adjustment. So this four inches or so that it's above the deck is plenty. All right, see you in another few. Okay, heavy metal workers there. We're getting ready to make the gooseneck. And I gotta admit, this is an experiment. So what I've got is a 1764 inch bit in this vise. It's 1 64th of an inch above quarter inch diameter, which means it's uh, 1 64th inch larger than the mast. This has to become kind of a shepherd's hook shaped thing. So I'm thinking my 64th of an inch will be just adequate to give me a nice little radius. And I'm probably going to fight this for a bit because naturally I'm on camera. Starting to go. Yeah, just a little bit more working. Okay. Now that part looks pretty good. So I have to nip off this little extra. And that's would have been a better job with nippers. I think I've got it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, I think I'm going to switch to the needle nose. Okay, so I think that's more or less it. That should slip in the mass, and I can always pinch this slightly if I want to snug it up around the mast or open it up if I need a little bit more loose. So I'm going to uh, glue this into the tube. Remember we've got a 16th inch diameter tube that's in our gooseneck. But I think that's it. We'll see you later. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, before I went any further I thought I would go ahead and show you where I've gotten. The main is all set at this point. So I wanted to point out to you what it is uh, that I've done so that you can follow along before I get uh, too far ahead here. Now I wanted to point out a couple of things. One is, I hope you remember these nylon spacers that we got. Uh, but one thing I did is I added a 16th inch diameter hole in the side uh, you can see here's our number 632 set screw. So I added this hole so I can stick the lines through there. Hopefully you can see that. Now it's not absolutely essential because you can also run the lines just between the boom and, uh, uh, the, and the uh, spacer. Another thing I wanted to point out was this grommet. This is a vinyl or rubber grommet. I've seen them called both. They call this 5 sixteenths, I don't know why. Uh, bring your boom in when you get it, but it's a hardware store item. Very inexpensive, just a few pennies. But you've got a groove in here that you can tie a knot. You put your boom through this hole in the grommet and it uh, tightens itself and it does not slip.
It's very clean, it's very positive, and it's very easy to adjust. Okay, so let's go on. Let's start with the cutting ham. So the first thing is, I took one of the brass eyelets, the round eyelets, and I squeezed it and flattened it so that it uh, actually sticks up above the boom. Now, you can see here, well now I've got all the rigging, it's a little tough to move, but you can see here that the gooseneck goes through the boom and I've got the eye right on the gooseneck itself. So the gooseneck is holding the eye. All right. So I've got a purchase on here of two to one. So I tied the knot to the eyelet, came up, down, back through the eyelet, and ran it back to our spacer with the set screw. So that's a two to one purchase. So if I want to tighten the luff of the mainsail, I pull this, the luff gets tight. Did you see that? Okay, so that's pretty slick. Next thing is the vang. The instructions tell you to drill a hole in the boom and at the base of the mast, and that's okay, but I decided just to uh, whip it and I did a hidden knot that I pulled into the loop inside of its uh, wrapping and then crazy glued it. So I have no holes in the boom, but I went with the uh, brass eyelets again and I've got a four to one purchase. That's important. Uh, three to one would work also. Two to one's getting a little marginal, but there actually is a pretty good load on this. So I left this tail here to see that I tied it here. So I went one, two, three, four, and then came out through the eyelet to this. And this is the adjustment for the vang. So if I pull this tight, watch the vang get tight. That's four to one, so that's got quite a bit of uh, strength to it. On to the main sheet. So I turned the transmitter on and I put it into the hard on the wind position so that I know about where my sheet is. So here I've got the main sheet that comes up. This goes into uh, an adjusting uh, spacer. And the reason for that is that otherwise I'd have to come up with some sort of uh, uh, turning block or eyelet or something. This is very simple and clean and I get to move it. So here you can see the line comes through and it's going between the boom and the spacer. And I left this intentionally slack. But to adjust the relative position of the boom, I just slide this spacer forward or aft and that adjusts how far in the mainsail goes. I'll do the same thing for the jib. And therefore, when I get the transmitter all the way hard on the wind, you, you never want your jib at as tight as your mainsail, so the jib should always be farther out. This gives you the ability to adjust the sail in and out relative to each other. Finally, here's our grommet on the outhaul. You can see that it's uh, tightened up uh, with a very short line around itself, and in fact, if you pay attention, I notch this just to get this grommet to be very clean and tied up against the sail. Uh, that's more for bragging rights than anything else. And if you look at it, <clears throat> here you just wiggle this and you can see how the foot gets tight. If you want it in a light air setting with a fuller sail, you just sort of wiggle it forward and the sail is getting full. Now. I'm not staging this. This is actually what it takes to get it to move. It's very solid. And then here, of course, we've got our backstay uh, bowsy. So that's pretty much it. I think you can figure it out from here. Um, there are different ways to do this. Will shows you uh, using Velcro. That works too. But uh, use your own creative imaginations and you'll come up with something. But the most important thing is go out and have fun. All right, we'll see you in a bit. We're going to get the jib up.
Okay, all you riggers out there in rigger land. Uh, we're moving right along and man, we're closing in on it. I thought I'd give you a few minutes to take a look at what I've got here on the jib boom. Don't get ahead of yourselves. Don't think it's too complicated because it really isn't. The instructions are actually quite fine and will make you a very competitive boat if you do just like the instructions say. But I've uh, come up with a way that I like to rig the boat. And, you know, that's the beauty of these boats. If you decide that, you know, I'd really like to change the main sheet or change the jib sheet, it's really very easy. You know, re-rigging is not a big deal. <clears throat> so don't feel that uh, you're absolutely stuck with whatever you've got now. So moving ahead, uh, this is the eyelet that we put, we screwed into the end of the jib boom earlier. And just like the instruction said, I've got this part, which is how I attach the front end of the jib boom. I've got that one and a quarter inches back. This is the adjustment for that. I can tighten this and loosen it. And I could move the jib a little further forward. I can also tighten the head stay a little bit. You know, uh, all of that stuff is fine tuning. The most important thing is to get sailing. But this little adjustment is just an approximate position. I've got it at four inches back right now. And that certainly could be shorter or longer. <clears throat> then here, I've got, an out, uh, I've got my out hull very similarly rigged to the mainsail and I've done it on the boom. Now this is the jib sheet. <clears throat> I've got this nylon spacer just opposite uh, above that and then this is my adjustment for that. Now notice I haven't tied it yet because I don't have the uh, jib on yet. But if I want to open up the jib some more relative to the mainsail I move this back and then pull this through and the jib will open up more. And then finally I've got my grommet which is what I'm going to tie the out hole or how I'm going to adjust the out hole on the jib. So I'll just tie a little knot around that, tie it close just like I did on my mainsail. And that works pretty well. Now, you know, if you just wanted to go sailing and tie it off right now, that would work too. But I've already showed you how to make the nylon spacers and use the set screws. So this gives you the ability to adjust things and if you wanted to remove the jib boom you just back off on the set screws and slide it out. Alright, I think that's pretty straightforward but uh, we're going to get to attaching the jib and getting the jib on next. And folks, that's almost it. Okay folks, you know rigging around here is de rigueur. I had to add that. So here we are getting ready to do the uh, luff and as you can see I've got the nylon tube put into the luff of the jib. It's uh, about 44 inches of nylon tubing. I've screwed an eye into the bottom so I'm going to open up that eye very slightly with a set of needle nose pliers. Put this into the front of the jib boom. Oops, let me open it up a little more. Okay, so that's that's in the jib boom. Now let's close it. Okay. All right, so that part's done. Now what I'm going to do is tie a short line from the tack of the jib into the eyelet and next I'm going to do the out haul around the grommet. So when we come back I'm going to have those two things done and we're going to be ready to put the uh, head stay on, okay? Alright, so I've got the tack and the clue attached here which is uh, the thing immediately preceding getting the head stay on. So you can see I've got this tied to the rubber grommet. I actually notched a little notch in the uh, corner patch. Not essential, but uh, for those of us that are anal retentive, uh, maybe it'll be a distraction otherwise. Also tied this up short, and uh, 
Are we remembering to put about a quarter of a drop of crazy glue on these knots? This is Spectra and it's amazingly difficult to tie a permanent knot into this stuff. All right, so when we next come back, we're going to get the uh, head stay on and we'll get the length right on that, okay? All right, well, we've now gotten to a very important part of rigging the boat. And it's very important because you don't want to have to call up Will and tell him, Will, I cut the length of the head stay too short. I need another one. So we have some very important things that we need to discuss. First off, it's a lot easier to make a head stay that's too long short than to make a head stay that's too short long. So if you're concerned, go ahead and creep up on it and start out with it being a little bit too long. Next thing is, and this is absolutely essential, you want to make sure that there is no tension on the jib sheet, no tension on the main sheet, and no tension on the back stay. Any of those will cause the mass to bend, and we do not want any pre-bend in this. Now, the boom in the mainsail is actually bending the mast slightly aft, so I'm going to make this very slightly shorter more like a natural length that it would be without without the boom on there but I'm gonna pull it forward just a fraction so I'm gonna say right about there but you can see that this is all within the range of the movement of the jib okay so without further ado I'm going to clip this and in fact, I'm going to take my own advice and I'm going to clip it about, uh, I don't know, an eighth of an inch too long. So let's see how we do. So we're going to put an eyelet in there. By the way, if you need a slight bit of adjustment, you can always go to the hardware store and get slightly longer eyelets if you need to. Okay, that is a wee bit too long, so I'm going to go ahead and clip it off. But basically, all we have to do is, once we get the length right, we just close this up, and that part is done. And then it's on to the shrouds, and uh, that's almost it for the rigging, okay? So, um, we'll be back to you in a second. I'm going to shorten this up, and uh, we will see you in just a few moments. Okay, guys. You know, we are really getting close to getting this thing wet. So, I thought that I would mention three tools that you probably should get for your toolbox. I got these very long set of tweezers from the hardware store. Uh, very handy for digging out sheets. Also, uh, same hardware store, I got some hemostats. And if you're a surgeon, I'm guessing you can probably get these cheaper than I can. Um, and finally, this is a screwdriver that's uh, just perfect for getting the tops of the screws on the servos. You're going to need to have something like that also. Uh, also remember, you're going to need a 1 16th inch uh, Allen wrench for adjusting these uh, set screws on your boom. And uh, one other thing that's very handy is, uh, and again, if you're a surgeon, there are these uh, squeeze bulbs that are perfect for getting out water. Now, in the old days of flying RC planes, we used to have squeeze bulbs for fuel. So those would be ideal for sucking water out of the boat. But without further ado, I wanted to cover what happens and uh, what we should be looking for in a properly rigged uh, boat with the head stay the right length. So I've released the back stay so it's very soft now. The head stay should likewise reflect that. Uh, you can even see this part wobbling here, the attachment at the deck. That means it's very slack. That's exactly what we want to have. With the back stay slack, the head stay is slack. Now as we tighten this up, 
The head stay has gotten very tight and the mast is getting bent. So this is tight. Our luff is uh, getting snug here. So you can see that we've made quite a bit of, of adjustment here by tightening the back stay. All right, I'm going to slack this off a little bit. For the jib halyard, I've permanently tied that, and I generally don't adjust it very much. Um, I've played with it a little bit, and you know, if you wanted to, you could certainly make a cunning hand like our mainsail and put it up here on our jib. That would work fine. In fact, I, I think I might do that as a project for me a little later. But um, we're ready to adjust our main sheets and jib sheets and cut those. So first off, you want to bring the sails all the way in. So with the, here's the sails out. Bring them in all the way with the trim all the way in also. You want both of these as far forward as they would possibly ever get. And right now, I've got the uh, I've got the uh, jib set to where it's about halfway between the mast and the shear and the boom is almost on center line. Now if we decide later we want to adjust that we've still got this adjustment and we've got this adjustment for both sheets. But at this level you could basically trim them. Be sure and put your little drop of crazy glue on there and also be sure you don't get crazy glue on your fingers or on your finish. But uh, you've got plenty of play here, so you can always come back and adjust it, okay? So, I've already tied these off, and like I said, this is about a super, super tight, hard on the wind position. Uh, you wouldn't want anything more than that. So let's see what it looks like with the sails all the way out. And there we go. Sails all the way out there. So that's a run. And you'll find that the boat likes to go wing on wing quite a bit. Um, so that's pretty much it, except for the shrouds, um, which I'm going to cover next. The boat is all but done. So we've almost gotten there, folks. Hang with me for just a little bit more, and we're going to go sailing. Well, practically beyond belief, this is the last bit of rigging that we're going to do. It's getting the shrouds on, and I know the instructions tell you to use the uh, spectra line that's provided and use the two bowsies. Well, a couple things. One is I used one of the bowsies as my backstay adjuster, but if you take a look, you'll see that it's also just a nipped off control arm off of a servo, and you get several parts, so you can make some more bowsies that way. But the other thing is, I've discovered that even without any adjustment, you're able to uh, stretch the uh, shrouds and the mast enough to end up using uh, an unadjustable shroud. And to show you that I'm a slave to fashion, I'm using a fishing leader that I bought that is red to match my red boat. So uh, <clears throat> I'm a little silly that way. but. I've already put the leader up at the top. The leader goes into the eyelet that's screwed into the mast. So I made it just a couple inches longer than, the, uh, than uh, it needs to be just to get to the shrouds. So I've already done this on the other side, but what you need to do <clears throat> is get one of the brass eyes. Just the standard little brass eye. We're going to use that to put into the eyelet that is screwed into the deck. Now I have opened up both of the eyelets that are screwed into the deck and we're going to hook this into that. So first let's put this sleeve onto our uh, leader. There we go. Okay, now, so I've got that onto uh, the eyelet. 
or the eye rather, onto the um, shroud. Now I've got I've got the sleeve here <clears throat> a little bit loose and popped off. So now I've already got the other side done to the same way. So I want to make sure that I am not influencing the mast one way or the other. I want to make sure that they have the same amount of tension. They don't need to be super tight. They really don't. So I'm going to mess with this, get them both the same amount of tension. because I'm anal and because we don't want the boat to have a preference one way or the other. Now, I've got some uh, nippers that could be used to cut all the way through, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to squeeze it enough to make sure that it doesn't, uh, doesn't pull through. And there we go. So they're not very tight, but you can see that if we want, see, it comes off without the adjustment. Folks, that's it for the rigging. So uh, I got another couple of points that I will talk to you, and it's time to get this thing wet. You know, all you folks, I've had a great time building this boat, and I hope you've enjoyed building your boat, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've certainly enjoyed making it. And you know, you're going to have years ahead of sailing with your friends and getting to play with the boats, and it's just great. And I've certainly had a great pleasure in bringing this to you and going out sailing. So I did have a couple of final things. Uh, obviously I have not always followed the instructions but on the other hand you can use your own imagination and come up with many other solutions for many of these other uh, items and issues that come up that's one of the best parts of the boat you don't absolutely have to know exactly what you're doing to scratch your head and say you know I can do that better so here's a couple of things I think I've said it before but before you go sailing, please put some protection onto the electronics. The corrosion uh, issue does not go away. So you do want to give just a tiny spritz of some sort of corrosion preventative on your electronics. Do all the uh, plugs, which are the, which are the most vulnerable. Oddly enough, the servos seem to last quite well. I use the bow shield, but I've also heard some other folks uh, that are into electronics that have some equally as good, if not better, products. One of the things that I have ch uh, changed on my boat is the hatches. Um, clearly, you do not want water to get into the boat. And on blustery days, water will get over the deck. So I went uh, and just went straight to going with tape. And this is a contact paper that you can get at the hardware store. Get about three lifetime supplies for about five bucks. And this is like four inches by six and a half inches. And all I do is I'll pull a corner and I bend this over like that. That helps me remove it later. But I just cover the hatches with this clear contact paper for the very simple reason that it's actually quite watertight. Now, I know that there are more aggressive adhesives out there, but on the windy days or cold days, I noticed that the contact paper is not particularly prone to bonding as well. I'll cover it with some electrical tape just to do the belt and suspenders. 
And after some very wet days, I found that uh, my boat has stayed remarkably dry. So uh, over the rudder, I put a two inch by three inch piece of clear contact paper. And generally speaking, you don't have to remove this very often. So I've found that the contact paper over the rudder has stayed quite well and uh, has not had any problems with water. But like I said, the, over the main hatch you have to access this quite a bit. So on those days where it's really wet, do use some electrical tape to do the belt and suspenders and keep that water tight. You know folks, that's about it. It's been my great pleasure to bring T37 building to you and I hope you're done with yours and thinking, you know, on the next one, I think I'd do this. I hope to see you out there. Bye.